What up, what up? This is Mike the Philosopher here with another one. This one is about hip hop. Yo, it's 50 years, man. 50 years. August 11th, it turned 50 years old. Okay. Uh, special guest with me, Black Mellow in the building. What's up, man? What up, what up? So, yo, um, 50 years. Tell me something about hip hop, man, that uh, in, how, did was hip hop inspiring to you in any way? Uh, what, what do you think about the genre as a whole uh, as of right now? As of right now, I don't uh, particularly like it. I don't like it right now. I think for the first time in 50 years of hip hop being in existence in the form that we know it and knew it, I think hip hop is the only musical genre that actually devolved and went backwards. And now it's, it's basically at a point where they've always said that it would be to some degree where they said it was just a fad it would come in and it will quickly fizzle out. I think it caught wind like a wildfire and it and it became way more than they anticipated because of the self-empowerment aspect of it. And then they quickly found out after maybe a decade or two how to leverage that self-empowerment and then create monsters within to infiltrate and then self-destruct that self-empowerment to the point where now 25, 30 years later, after those couple of empowerment decades, now we at a point where we have gone so far back to where now we have people lap dancing the devil in videos and it's cool with people. And that they're they're people, doing what now? Lap dancing. Lap, lap dancing the devil. Oh yeah. goodness. Yeah, in the video. Okay, so, so yeah. yeah, okay. I, I was gonna ask you about what you don't like. So since you started there, tell us more about what you don't like about hip hop. I, I do want you to get into what you do like, but since we started now, what you don't like, go ahead and go in on it, man. What what is it you yeah. don't you don't like? I don't I don't like the fact that these rappers today rap is one of the key elements of hip hop it's just one of them right break dancing graffiti you know what i mean the right. mc the dj right the culture it's a lifestyle rap. yeah yeah so that's one element but you you have to you have to hone your craft you got to take it serious these cats today do not take it serious. They openly, happily tell you, I am not even a rapper. I don't care nothing about bars. I'm in it to make money. So they say whatever people tell them to say to make money just for a dollar. They will threaten another brother's life for a dollar. Even if they're not living that life. Just to incite that kind of, plant that kind of seed, put it out there. Bars be weak in the mud, but it's over what they call today, I guess, a drill beat, which is an aggressive beat. And then it sounds cool. So they like, yeah, I'll slide on you. I'll kid. It's all the typical stuff. Okay. So, like, so, so name, name a name, man. Who's, who's out there right now that you'd be like, I don't know how this, how this dude or this chick is famous. Well, uh, I mean, I don't know a lot of these kids' names. And I'm going to say kids because they the same age as my kids. But uh, what's, what's, it's, one little, it's one little girl. Uh, uh, dang. I don't know. She kind of looked like Orson Annie to me. She got like big eyes and she got red or red like an apple. Oh yeah. I think I know who you're talking about. Uh, I don't know yeah. her name. I forgot her name too, but she got the big red afro or whatever. She called everybody a munch. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Calling everybody a month. I'm gonna, but, I'm gonna get her name and put her face up here. So and I know, know and listen, and I, and I know I'm supposed to be politically correct. I know I sound like the old dude. Don't don't get it twisted. I know. Yeah, I yo, like we we're not going, going politically correct why. on hip hop. Yeah. Let's just let's just go that's all the way in. This is the 50th anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Let's, this let's, is this is an honest observation. Man. Ain't no filter. I don't care how I sound. Politics. Bump all that. I don't care how I sound. I am being honest with it. Let's, I'm let's telling go. the truth. Let's these go. these cats do not care about bars. They don't respect what it is. They killing, they self-destructing the culture as we know it is going backwards. You know how in the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, I'm talking about late seventies, early eighties, there was like hip hop, hip it, hip it, hip it, hip, hip hop. You don't stop the rock. Very simple, right? right. Bars was not complex. Right? It hadn't developed yet. Mm -hmm. Man, I'd be doggone if we ain't back there now. Where mm -hmm. you can't even understand these cats. I mean, it's it's not even hip hop, hip it, hip hip. It's it's more you can't even understand the pronunciation. I know your favorite. Went, right? Your favorite is blue face, ain't it? And I couldn't tell you a bar. <laughs> I couldn't tell you one line of blue face, man. He he's just like a like a plant to me like these cats is like okay just put him in there just i know you know i know your uncle just make him a rapper and and that's how i pay my debt to to your uncle i'll make your nephew a rapper you know but he ain't never rapped before so what he gonna make millions watch boom put him out there and he's just a rapper you don't care nothing about nothing he just oh man i get to bang this one i lay with this one sleep with that one have sex with her boom make money say what I want. Oh, this is a bet. And then the money generated, pay somebody off. It's like, this dude just put out there just to send messages, like messed up signals and messages of a culture that is self-destructive, man. Because he claimed to be a crip, from what I understand. He's just out there just spreading just toxicity, man. And he's fighting with his girl every other day. You know, I don't even know him about no lyrics. And this is the point. These cats are killing the culture of hip hop. Fifty years later, tell me I'm lying. Anybody out there, tell me I'm lying. No, you. I'm here. Man. I'm here. I'll take a seat and I'll listen. You know who you were talking about? Ice Spice. Ooh. Yeah, Ice Ice Spice. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not attacking her, man, but I see that the, the machines out there, the these machines, these money-making machines out here in the form of suits that just see a dollar sign with no responsibility for the compromising situations they putting these kids in. The, the, the kids out here thinking, okay, this is the lick. This is the way to make money. This is how I get my feet on. This is how I get in the industry. This is how, this, that, and the third. Right. And they don't care nothing about, they too young to consider the cost later on. They don't consider no cost. They're not full men, full women yet. They're not grown yet. Right. They're not responsible yet. Let, let me ask you this, Black. Do you think that women are running hip hop right now? No, I don't think women are running it. No. I think for the first time in history, women definitely are being recognized a whole lot more than they used to be. They are honestly are being recognized to where they selling selling out shows for the first time in history. I you think, can never I think get the women are people. running it right now, man. The women, women uh, are. Well, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say they're running it, you know, because uh, it's still way too lopsided. In my opinion, it's way too. It's way more dudes out here touring and and you know doing numbers than it is women. I mean, you got Fifty Cent. Fifty Cent just sold like six hundred thousand units or streams in in one week, and this is off his twenty five year tour, tour mm -hmm. anniversary mm -hmm. of you know Get Rich or Die Trying or one of them 
whichever one it was. Like, I'm talking about what? Like, this cat, and, and he ain't like did no promotion or nothing. You know, I mean, he's still out here doing crazy numbers, and and he he's an old head considered now, even though to us he's a younger artist. You know, compared to a uh, Big Daddy Kane or Rock Kim, but still, he out here doing crazy numbers, man. Twenty something years later, so yeah, fifty, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but Busta Rhymes, he's been in it twenty some years. He's selling out shows, still. You know, old old head. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's Nas. He just he on his fourth new album now. Like, and he 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 just went. He was number one for what his last. Mean, I mean, working album? with. Yeah, he got four new albums. You yeah, mean off, nah. off, of, off of his label, off of his uh, original label, or what do you mean fourth? No, new? no, he, with 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 Hitman, with Hit Boy, he got four albums. He got four projects with Hit Boy, and mm-hmm. he out, if I'm not mistaken, and he out here doing crazy numbers, and they all his. He own all his masters to all of these projects. Which is why I think he's doing all this in the first place. Because he didn't own his previous stuff, Illmatic and this, that, and the third. And they probably wouldn't sell it back to him. So he like, I bet. So he went and got with a young, hot producer. And he re- he's he doing all his old stuff. And he got his daughter as an executive producer. So she going to get generational wealth for life. And, and his son. He got a son, too. And they... And he making all new music, and he killing it. Yeah, he's doing crazy numbers. Yeah, he is. He is doing some numbers. Um, shout out to Nas. Uh, real quick, man, yeah. give me, give me, give me your top five MCs, man. Man, my top five, man. It, it kind of be changing. Uh, I'm gonna say, Rakim. Number Tavino, one, no black dog. I gotta give it to Ra, man. I know I said on other other podcast uh previous shows that you know reno would be number one but it gotta be rock kim gotta be me is okay. rock kim number one because he, he's the foundation so without saying without question rock kim is number one you know and that's just what it is it ain't, then uh, it ain't so, ib ski ib ski <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my dog right there ib ski but yeah. no, he not he not my top five. Okay. Not my top five. But that's right. my dog. Little inside uh, thing there, y'all. So yeah. Rakim number one. Who else? Rakim. Then you got it's a it's a it's a tie, man. It's a tie between Thought, Black Thought, and K Reno. It's a tie, man. It's a tie because them, them cats lyrically no any you can on any given day they will eat anybody lunch, Eminem included will eat their lunch. Any one of them. They'll molly wop anybody you put in front of them, Black Thought and K Reno. Is if so you could say either one of those at number two. A lot of people Rock don't Kim. know about K Reno, man. So they're gonna have to research I that. I know. But he got twenty five albums. And this is we talk about hip hop here. So this is a good chance to just go on and, and pull up one of his albums, K Reno. Yeah. So uh let me see. So just do After. just just do one and two like two and three, man. You know, you can't put have both Black Thought and K Reno at number two. Just do a two and a three. Who who's number two? Who's number three? Well, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Thought at two and K Reno at three. Okay. Yeah. Give me and two. Then I'll put a, I'll put a Lauren Hill at number four. Okay. More than human and number four. And uh I mean, shoot, man, there's so many people. Uh it's a lot of honorable mentions. Uh but number five, that that person can can be entertained with a lot of people. Just know that. But I'll say KRS, number five. Okay. Okay. And then I'll just leave it at that. Because they could be interchanged, you know. All right, let me give, let me give, let me, four. All right, let me give you my top five real quick. Uh, Jay Z number one. 
Jay Z. He did. He did the most in the game. He flipped it the most, the best. He just. He just. He just. Uh, he flipped what the best? What are you talking about? Huh? What are you talking about? He did. He flipped it the best. What do you? What did he do? He. His first of all, I like heavy bars, and Jay got heavy bars. He he's one of the rappers with heavy heavy bars. And what I mean by that is very cerebral, very, um, you got to think about what he's saying. You don't just walk away dancing and tap dancing like a, you know, like like a, I want to say a slave or something, but he, he makes you think. And I like, I like, I like dudes with bars that make you think and ladies with bars that make you think. So he does that he also have longevity in the game he has pretty longevity so he he has a proven track record he he uh he has a lot of billboards a lot of awards uh a lot of other mcs and i think he's in a hall of fame uh, along with tupac I, I could be i could be wrong about that but i think he did is in a hall of fame rock and roll hall of fame um a lot of accolades, a lot of awards, heavy bars. He changed culture. You know, people was getting Chris style when he was talking about it. You know, people was getting, you know, what, what, whatever he was talking about, they was they was following Jay. He was he was a leader in the culture. And we, we, we talking about hip hop. He was a leader in the culture in a lot of ways. And when it, and when he said we ain't drinking Chris style no more, everybody fell off of it and and got that ace of spade. So, um, and not, I mean, I'm not even mentioning the fact that he's a, a billionaire. So, uh, there's a lot of things that the dude did in the game that was uh, unparalleled to anybody else. You know. Right, so well, what? What else? He, no, go ahead, he he's not just he's not just well first of all i know that um look i, I got a list of, of of the best mcs before uh billboard ever came out with their their top five okay let's start there so trust and believe i ain't copying them they probably copying me because i had jay and i had him in one of the videos i had jay number one back then uh, a, a a year or two ago so um and i've seen that billboard came out with uh with jay at number one and did i feel validated a little bit you know um but i'm not saying that billboard is always right either but uh in a way i kind of felt validated uh but he just he just he just he got a lot of songs he got a lot of crossover he can he can uh, make songs for women. He can make songs for the guys. He can go gully. He can go, you know, braggadocious. He can go cerebral. He can go like legacy and and things like that. And he can collab with people like Kanye. He can he in a concert. He can um, switch up his style and do a lot of freestyle stuff which i don't see a lot of other rappers doing you know he'll 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 spit bars that he don't even spit on you know on wax at, at some of his concerts um he's he's the most versatile most dynamic so that's why i got jay at number one number two i got but i will say, can I say go ahead. one thing about jay though go ahead jay is dope Right, he's dope. Right, he right. he he a dope MC and all that. Right, mm -hmm. but I will say, at his peak and at his prime, he was never the top lyricist at his prime, and that's why, you know, I kind of squint a little bit. Well, I know number one. Well, but, I know, and a lot of people. You know, I, I seen I seen a video. And you probably you probably sent me the video of a guy talking about, oh well, Jay was never the best in his era, or never the best in this. Era. Listen, 
you are you are you if you people you you can't really you can't really go by that man we're talking about in totality we're talking about in totality look at his awards look at his number one hits look at his uh record sales look at um a lot of the things that he did how he shaped the culture nobody really shaped the culture more than jay you know i would i would argue nobody really shaped the culture more than jay did but Um, what i'm saying is what i'm talking about is is not about his basically braggadocious money making you know uh influence on the culture what I'm talking about, me myself, is being an MC. I'm okay. talking about bars. I'm talking about lyrics. Okay. I'm talking about okay. being a rapper. Okay. I'm talking okay. about okay. I got you. About I got you. I got you. And and here's the thing, you know, people want to pretend like Jay ain't got no bars, which is ridiculous to me. Okay. Um. When I say name your top five. I mean, encompass everything. I mean, encompass everything. I'm not talking about just the lyrics and the flow of the guy that you like. I'm talking about encompass every variable that encompasses them being in that spot. Flow, lyrics, how they change the game, longevity, all of these categories. Okay. When you when you combine all these categories, Jay is number one. If you want to speak to stick to one category, lyrics, and not go in and not pick and not use the totality of all the variables, then you probably will say somebody else is number one, like Rock Kim. You know, and that's that's how you measure things. Me. I measure everything in totality. So if if everything in totality, I got to go with Jay because he did it better than anybody else. If you take all the totalities into consideration. You see what I'm saying? There's some with better flow than Jay. There's some with a better voice than Jay. There's some with better lyrics than Jay. There's some with better cadence and there's some with better music and some with better hooks all that stuff but i'm talking about in totality all the categories that's why jay is number one that's probably why billboard chose him number one okay yeah but they have a different agenda and it's a it's a it's not a culture driven agenda so but it's not it's not, not about an agenda good. it's just about picking who who did it the best it's not no, about it's agenda. best for them best for what, them what what, what agenda yeah, okay let, first of all let me let me let me finish my list and then we then we'll go get into that right. number two nasty nasty Nas all right Nas has a uh a, a, a huge track record the guy is still pumping out music the guy has some of the nastiest bars, probably the sickest flow out there. Um, you know, listen, here's the thing about Jay-Z, and I'm going I'm to I'm share a weakness of Jay-Z. Jay-Z don't know how to pick music. That's Jay's weakness. He picked trash music. Neither did Rock him. Huh? Well, I can't either. Right, right, right. But if Jay would have picked better music, he would have been be- a better MC to a lot of other people. You know, that's why when he was with, I think Premier did his first with Reasonable Doubt. That's why that was a lot of people favorite because Premier did it. So the music was on point. For the most part, I don't know if Premier did the whole album, but what I'm saying is that's probably why he decided to just get with Kanye. 
because Kanye was a better, you know, music producer or whatever. So when when Jay is combined with dope producers, he he shatter he he destroys it. But if he not if he don't have that music behind him, a lot of people are not going to appreciate his bars. Like um when he's with uh Just Blaze, when he do records with Just Blaze, he is sick. He is sick every time. He need he he should have he should have stuck with Just Blaze and just did all Just Blaze beats. Uh, I actually think Just Blaze is a better producer than Kanye, but that's just me. Just Blaze is one of my favorite. Uh, that's a that's a big statement. Not, well, not necessarily. Kanye Kanye is Kanye is good. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Kanye is very dope in what he chooses, but he ain't better than Just Blaze as as far as producer, in my opinion. Just Blaze is sick. Okay. Um, and whenever and, and whenever Jay is with Just Blaze, he destroys it. Uh, no, Just Blaze got some cold stuff with Michael Jackson. That's raw. That's 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 slept on. I bet. I bet just blazes. He he's he's dope. He's dope. You know, Kanye has some shade for just blaze, but just blaze is uh you know <laughs> he claimed he claimed he stole his style and all that. And Jay came to just blaze defense and was like, nah, I don't I don't I don't agree that Kanye said that he uh just blaze stole his style. Just blaze is just blaze. He do his own thing. He don't he don't need to take nothing from nobody. We do everything in totality when we was uh, under the same roof, you know, and and Ye try to throw shade, but that's another story. Anyway, Jay at number one, Nas at number two. Number three is Rakim for me. The dude was a trendsetter. The dude was, when I first heard Rakim, I was like, oh, it's not going to be the same after this. Rap is going to be... Rap is going to be, <laughs> rap is going to be huge. Okay, Rakim was the, him and Eric B were the first ones to get a million dollar record contract. Okay, those guys were trendsetters. Everybody, your favorite MC wanted to be Rakim. Okay, so uh, Rakim, I understand why he's your number one, but I think you're just going by one category, which is bars, and I get it. You know. Um, no bars and influence. Rakim ain't got more influence than Jay. Let's stop. No, Let's not stop. today. No, not ever. Me, ask me when he first he, came out. He 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 never. Where was really Jay? Out Where was Jay when Rakim dropped my melody? Right. Well, I mean, look, they're two different. They're two different eras. Let's let's keep it real. That's, but, that's what I'm saying. Like he, but what what I'm saying is he he curtailed the the happy go lucky kind of uh you know hip hop and and like the the flow the entire flow and the cadence changed and the demeanor changed it was serious it was it was a little militant it was a little it was spiritual too he he brought the dude Jay-Z wouldn't be Jay-Z without Rock him he he basically brought the five percent nation into hip hop on a on, and he put it on a map to this yeah, day. Yeah. Uh Jay Z claims that nation uh on the low and people don't realize that. But but yeah, he, he basically he made it cool to be spiritual. You know what I mean? So I mean you can go a lot of different ways, but his impact, I'm talking about impact on hip hop, not even influence, his impact was 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 a uh, hip hop changing? It was it was culture changing. It it curtailed the whole industry. Well, I'm everybody not, wanted. I'm not. To I'm, not I'm not. I'm not denying that. I'm not d disputing that. Um, Rakim was a game changer. Like I said, your favorite yeah, and MC it was is, is, is Rakim. Your, yeah, your, and your it was favorite MC looks his favorite MC is Rakim. So, uh, he was influential. I know he influenced Nas. He influenced. A lot of he these influenced things. all the the the, the people the, on the a list. A lot of conscious. The he, coldest he, people on he, any list. He influenced them. 
Yeah, he was one of the he was one of the first conscious MCs out there. I mean, that I can remember that was uh very conscious of, you know, who he was, his religion, his this, that, and the third. So I got Rock Kim at number three. At number four is I have to I have to give it to Big. Um Big was even though he had a short run, the guy batting average was insane. Okay. He he just had an insane batting average. And what I mean by that is if if Big is on the track, it's probably gonna be a hit. It's gonna be a home run. He every, every time this guy stepped to the plate, he was Babe Ruth with it. You know what I mean? So or Hank Aaron, I should say. But um, but Big was, he had heavy bars. He had influence. If he would have stayed longer in the game, he, he could have climbed that ladder and possibly have been number one. But um, his time was cut short, obviously. So uh, that's why he's a little lower on the list. No fault of his. He had one of the best batting averages out there as an MC, but we didn't get we didn't get to see much of him. Uh, but he's that's why he, I'm surprised he's even on the list. He didn't do enough, you ask me. Yeah, and that's fair. That's fair. But uh, I think he did enough to uh, to take a measurement. And I'm so glad he his last album was a double CD because. It was almost like him giving three albums to the to the game. Um, you know, he 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 did enough to me to 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 warrant like if I have to see see what he did and how he was he was influencing the game as well. A lot of people was trying to. I mean, he he gave birth to you know Junior Mafia and Lil Kim and 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 all those cats he was helping out uh you know the locks and all that and he was cool with the locks uh very influential very influential he pretty much built bad boy he pretty much built the whole record label which is why you know puff is so rich right now it's because of big he he built it um but uh i i seen enough of him to have him at number four at least and uh you know there you have it at at number five i would probably say and this is a little debatable but i'm gonna i'm gonna have to say big daddy kane i i don't think um i think lyrically kane was just ridiculous he was just he was real sick um uh, rapping style, he could he could sing he could rap about you know pretty much anything. He could rap for the ladies, he could rap for the fellas, he could do all of that stuff. So that's my top five: Jay, Nas, Rakim, uh, you know, Big, and then Big Daddy Kane. I probably would have KRS number six if we were going further, but there you have it. Um, What do you oh uh, or did I have Eminem number six? It was either it was either KRS or Eminem that was number six. But um what about rap groups, man? Give me quickly give me your top five rap groups. Rap groups? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you can consider the roots a group. Yeah, they're a group. Yeah. Uh I'll say I'll say Run DMC number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me see. After Run DMC, I mean you got Diggable Planet, you got Tribe Called Quest, you got Wu Tang. Uh, you got them two, three, four, and five. No, I'm just naming off people. I'm trying to. I'm trying to categorize right. it. Well, let let me go first, and then you can kind of uh, reshuffle your your right. list. Number one, I got Wu. I think Wu is like a superhero group, man. I think Wu is uh, probably the most powerful uh, rap group to really do it. 
I mean, you had so many members in Wool, nine guys, uh, I believe, and and some extended guys too. Uh, Wool was just uh, they were a force, man. So uh, you know, uh, I I I gotta go with Wool number one. Number two is um, I got NWA because NWA, man, I mean, they kicked down the door. You're talking about changing the culture. These guys changed the culture. They gave us Dr. Dre. They gave us Ice Cube, DOC, Ren, Yella. They gave us Easy e They gave us all these people, man. And the, when I heard NWA, I was like, "This is this illegal? <laughs> this has to be illegal, what these dudes are saying. And sure enough, man, you know, they kicked down the door and made a huge impact change how people even rap and talk um and you know so i got nwa number two at number three i do got run dmc because run dmc started it all uh classic hits uh when i hear rock box to this day uh i i turn up uh king of rock i turn up i don't care where i'm at I I I guess down with that. Um, so those guys, the Godfathers of, of rap, is is Run DMC. I got them at number three. At number four, I got the Tribe. Man, the Tribe is just uh, you know abstract, eclectic, uh, easy listening, uh, influential. Uh, you don't have you don't have to be so hard. You don't have to be so you know you can be you know your own style different and you can still get your point across make the people dance and you can uh have a good time listening to tribe love listening to them they they kind of meditative music to me so um love to try it man and uh who did i have at number five uh at number five i think i had uh who did i have was it pe i don't think it was pe the guys from atlanta man what's their name okay outcast i had outcast at number five yeah so so uh so yeah that that's my top five what about yours I'm gonna say uh I'm gonna say run DMC. I mean this based off what I can remember right now. Run DMC. Uh man, it's kind of rough. But I'm gonna say Outcast. Then I'm gonna say Wu Tang. Then I'm gonna say the Roots. And then I'm going to say Tribe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you could, you could, you could even argue that, you know, like one of these, well, no, nah, I can't. I was going to try to, my fault. I was going to try to be politically correct. My fault. <laughs> I was going to bring in one of the new cats, the uh, Migos, you know, because they, you know, they made a lot of noise in the last they did. five they did. years, you know, but I really couldn't, like, Bad and Bougie, I mean, I heard that song, but, like, as far as a group, like, I, maybe, like, they're not my, you know, no, nah, they're not, they not on the list, my fault. <laughs> nah, let's keep it moving. <laughs> all right, all right, so tell me something, man, that you love about hip-hop, man. And what and where do you see it going in the next ten years? You see, that's the point, and that's the it's the nerve wracking point for me. The fact that I don't know I don't know where it's gonna go in the next ten years because you know it basically it can go a lot of different ways right now, depending on like you know the the young people, it's going to really depend on like the 10 year olds, the 12 year olds to really decide where they're going to take it. 
because it's a young man's sport, they always say, right? Mm-hmm. Even though that's changing. That's changing. Because you like we said, you got Jay-Z out there, you got he's still making music, touring, you got, you know, the roots out there, they still touring, you know, Nas, Buster Rhymes, 50 Cent, Eminem. You got some 20 20 something plus, and they all in their fifties. And they all they still out there, they still doing it and they doing numbers. But at the same time, they're not they're no there's no new fifty year olds breaking in the industry. Like you can break in the industry as a jazz musician artist, you know, in your fifties, and nobody will bat an eye. Mm-hmm. You know, you can still be in your seventies as a rock artist, and nobody will bat an eye. But it's it's it was tough for a 40, 50 year old to be on stage doing what they do and still be relevant because it's called hip hop. You still have to be hip, meaning you gotta be current or you gotta be cool enough or you gotta have cred enough to to carry an audience. So it was always hip hop being the cool trendsetter of the music genre industry. It used to be jazz, you know, it used to be disco at one point and then it became hip hop and it just if, never left hip hop. Okay, let's just say this. You 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 rule the world. You rule all the record companies, you rule all the radio stations, you rule the world. What kind of era of hip hop would you like to see or or do you want it to to evolve naturally the way it is or do you want it to revolt back to a certain time period? Um, what you 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 ruled the airwaves and the distribution and all that. What what do you want to see in the future? Man, honestly, eighty six to ninety six, and and the different genres of music, you know, that took place. Right. I, I even go eighty four with too short. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. I'll even, you know, even though he was talking just about some, you know, street negative pimping and, you know, this and that, it was still like at the time, like freedom of speech type thing. It was, it was pushing mm-hmm. the envelope. It was having a voice. Too live, you know. Crew. Even, yeah, too live crew, you know. And I, and I didn't agree with all of all the content and the music and all that. But at that time, it was pushing the envelope. It was, it was freedom of speech. It was let my voice be heard. And that's what hip hop to me was. And that's why my list is always like it is. Because it's about how I see it, how I feel about it, and what impact it had on my life. Because it's a lifestyle. It's a culture. Now, we just saying stuff. And it's not our lifestyle. We Some of these cats, some of these kids go home to good families, man. But they rapping like they in them streets. And they just spinning the block and spinning the block and you know, and they just they just jelly in people's skull and you know, I got a forty on me and I've been a you know, man, you got a good family at home, bro. But you ain't rapping about that. Almost like you ashamed of. You running away from people who love you. To run towards people who do not love you and don't a, care nothing about them. I seen a clip of uh Nicki Minaj and she said she ran into future. I don't know if you seen that clip. She said she ran into Future and she asked, and she said, Future said, everybody be thinking I'll be doing all these drugs and I'm a lightweight. I don't be doing all of these drugs. <laughs> and she was like, what? It's like, yeah. He, kinda, be. he be kind of lying on, on his records, but you know, it's what sells. You know what I mean? Ain't that a trip. So all for a dollar. It's, and this is my whole freaking point, man. It's my point, man. You got kids really doing it, though. They don't know no better. Like, like I said, they just kids. They're not men yet. They're not women yet. They're influential. These yeah. kids are just, they're impressionable, man. But that and has to is- but that has to say something about the audience, too, man. Why are we gravitating towards the most negative stuff? Like, the women gravitate to a lot of the glorillas and and you know uh megan the stallions and 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 you know ice spice and all that other stuff uh when it's not necessarily putting women in a bad light but at the same time the the men aren't 
men are gravitating towards the blue faces and all that and the futures and all that and they're not giving them a positive light is it is it does it says more about the audience or does it say more about the record companies and radio stations who are purposely putting uh that type of energy out there because they want to capitalize on it on another way like is it it the chicken or the egg is it the the industry or is it the audience no i'm gonna tell you man for one it's a lack of knowledge for us it's a lack you can only pull these tricks off to a people who don't know who they are to a people who who literally in history lost their real culture you can't pull this on chinese people even though they they admire respect and and honor and imitate our culture as close as they can with music break dancing and stuff like that but they really have a culture where they won't compromise they got boundaries within their own culture that won't allow them to demean themselves the way we do well, the thing, well, the the way thing we is they, women. the thing is they own their own industries though and they're not going to put out negative things uh, that will make themselves look bad but but other cultures own own the industries here and they don't mind making or helping make a certain demographic look bad because uh it's not their culture now when something is said about their culture they react they respond but if it's not about their culture they don't they don't really care about how the image of another culture is portrayed um, and that that right there is your answer. It's not the chicken and the egg or the egg or the it's exactly what you just said. The people who control the industry don't have a problem with putting money and funding projects that make another culture, which is ours, look bad. And they do it to the tune of millions upon millions of dollars being pumped. And they creating a prison industrial complex. They creating an environment of habitual criminality because right. they put well, money behind the coolest people. Right, the but coolest people with a with a jail prison culture in the music. Right. So um, you know, yeah, I get what you're saying. And I guess I and, and I will have to agree with you on on the era that 84 to 96 era i think that was probably the dopest era out there you had uh you had the bdp you had um you also had the you had everybody you had everybody you had wu you had nas you had jay you had uh, i don't think jay uh yeah i think they were in there they were in okay yeah uh, Dre, Dre and Snoop, ninety two. Okay, yeah. You had yeah, you had, everybody. That, NWA. Yeah, that was Man. that was the golden era. So I'm a co-sign Man. that and say, Man. yeah, I'm a co-sign that era, and I would say that was the best era of hip hop by far. Uh, you know, Man, you got yeah. people like Glorilla and Blueface out here now, and it's not. Not the it's best not the <laughs> I mean, people don't that's care that's about awesome. the craft no more. And and I don't know if you heard this one song by uh Q Tip and and Bust Busta Rhymes. And it goes, uh, these dudes can't handle handle the torch, so why pass it? Um, you know, um Dang. Yeah, they say uh these dudes can't ha- I, I, they can't have it. And they can't handle the torch, so why pass it? I mean, they they really kind of buses like you need to step up your bars for real. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah. They they went in on that. So it song. ain't just me saying it. But, it ain't just me saying it. Yeah, it ain't. It ain't. I don't but, know why people acting all bashful about keeping it a buck, man. Like they these kids are whack, man, and they just popularizing abusing opioids and drugs and because that's cool to them we created an environment that they are living in it's our generation's fault we 
made it cool to be the dope man. Dope man, dope man, yeah, that's me, right? We created that whole movement, made uh -huh. it cool because crack hit during our generation. Before yeah. that, it was Black Panthers and it was, it was about a movement, about something substantial. Then crack hit destroyed the, the music even that was self-empowering and became destructive, right? And as it became destructive, it sewed up in the music and boom, we start rapping about what we call reality rap. And the kids can look it up. Reality rap. That's the first time it's, it kicked off, N.W.A. And they right. were saying that's their reality. Even though we know now it wasn't all their reality. It was partially other people's reality and this and that. They wasn't in them streets heavy and tough like that. Maybe Easy e was to some degree. But lo and behold, they, none of them went to jail until they got famous. So, yeah. you know, yeah. that lets you know, okay, y'all wasn't that heavy. But but regardless of that, we popularized uh, the street life and made it cool to be in the streets. So yeah. from that point on, they were selling drugs and the music. And now the kids today, 20 years later, 30 years later, are using the drugs. And they're yeah. bragging about it. And now we have an opioid crisis. And, a, and, a, and a, just a crisis of abusing you know syrup and lean and you know we man like and they brag about it though it's crazy man and they rap like they on drugs they don't even pronunciate yeah and maybe we just maybe we're just in an era man where look it happens in every generation man the the other generation above you don't understand the younger generation below them yeah i, I would Our say parents, i would give them that our parents didn't yeah. understand us they you know and, and you know so forth and so on and we don't understand our kids yeah i and, would i would give them that man i yeah. would i thought yeah. about it a lot these kids don't deserve the credit though i ain't gonna lie man they don't deserve it and yeah. partially why i say that is because we was literally fighting to be heard even though our parents didn't understand we created something that did not ever exist before that is a huge difference. Before our generation, hip hop did not exist. It We grew up literally in hip hop. Right. It was no such thing prior to us. Now we handing it, the torch or trying to, to people who don't even care you mean, give me give me a couple, give me a couple MCs, man, real quick on who you got faith in. Who you got faith in, and like Kendrick? I got faith in Kendrick. Yeah, I got faith in J. Cole, definitely. Okay. I got faith in Joey Badass. You know what I mean? Uh, there's some new kids. There's a dude named Simba out there. I'm, I got my eye on. Yeah, yeah, Simba. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, doggone um, uh, uh, Sai High the Prince. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a monster. He, he he's probably a, he's, closer he's to our... Work. our age though so high well he's not well i mean he's he only got like maybe two or three albums yeah. but he's he's about you know a decade behind us or whatever but still he's very lyrical and you know he's about to, take over they're trying to age us man well you know i'm just saying right. you know but yeah uh but, i agree with the whole so it's, it's a uh, handful of them. yeah I, I agree with kendrick i got faith in him I'm still trying to figure out if, if Drake is writing his own bars. I think he wasn't, and he's he is now, and his music is suffering because he's solely writing writing all of his shit now. I mean, I well, that's, I think that's, he's aging out too. Yeah, that's just speculation. I, I I think he's he got since he got called out for Ghost Riders, he got rid of all of them. And now he's doing it all himself, and it, you can tell in his music because it's way softer than what it used to be. He used to come with heavy bars, so I don't know. Um, and I again, that's just allegedly. I don't, I don't know the guy uh, history for sure. If that's the case, still trying to figure him out. I do like Drake. I mean, uh, Cole, dope. J Cole, uh, J Cole, very dope MC. I, I agree with you on Simba. There's a couple. Um, there's a couple soldiers out there that um are you know you can hand the torch to 
Uh, so we'll we'll leave it at that. I will say, you know, I used to love her like Common. I still do. Hip hop is still in my heart. Uh, you know, it, it survived 50 years. I'm going to tell you, a lot of music genres don't survive that long. You don't hear much about rock and roll. You don't hear much about uh, disco. OK, you don't hear much about these genres no more. Hip hop took over all of that stuff. And hip hop is in right. country music, believe it or not. Hip hop is in country music. They they stole bars out of hip hop and they inserted them. And, and you got you can got proof of that with Lil Nas X. I ain't no Lil Nas X fan, but I'm just saying. Uh hip hop is everywhere. It 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 can uh you know marry with any other genre out there. Uh, you know, Pac was a rap blues artist, in my opinion. You know, uh, Run DMC was a rap rock and roll band. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of rap R&B groups out there. There's a lot of, it, it marries with every other genre. It doesn't matter. So, uh, you know, uh, Diggable Planets uh, and, and uh, Tribe, they rap jazz. You know what I mean? It, 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 it combines with any other genre. It's dope. Happy birthday to, to hip hop turning 50 that's a half a century super dope and let's let's preserve the culture and preserve the craft and step up the bars be creative and here's here's another thing too real quick black i think it's gonna start really getting kind of crazy and the reason i say that is because ai is going to get into the mix and AI is just going to start pumping out beats and bars. And and people are going to say, oh, you got a ghostwriter. Well, it's going to be AI. So we have to watch out for that part of it. And that's going to be a, a problem with all music genres. AI is going to start pumping out rap albums on their own. And it's going to be kind of ridiculous. So, uh you know keep it human keep it creative and 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 I, it, it probably will be a blessing in disguise because then you can you'll be able to tell the humans from the computers okay it's gonna I, ai may even force people to step up their bars okay you, you're gonna have to beat the robot now so if if you come into the game with some robotic bars you're gonna get called out you're gonna get called out. So, all that being said, I don't even think, don't even think they're gonna get called out, and and that's an AI is gonna be the death of hip hop because it's zero culture in a robot. And this is the whole point I've been making the whole time. It was always about the culture. It's no longer the culture no more. Now it's self destruct at all costs, and it's being funded by the millions and the people who capitalize and could care less about the culture. And you can only pull this off on a people who don't have their original culture. Couldn't pull this on Jewish people. Couldn't pull it on Asian people. You can't pull it on nobody else because they're still intact. We are destroyed people. And that's why we can have these tricks being ran on us and we fall for it because it's a dollar attached to it. The culture is dead now and it's showing up in the music. So AI, once that kick off fully, that's the death of hip hop, if you ask me, a robot doing all the rap. Because a robot ain't got no culture. So that's the epitome and a and the nail in the coffin. Yeah, you're the yeah. you're 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 a view of sunshine, man. Thanks for uh you know bringing your brightness to to this uh birthday party. Okay. No, you are you are. <laughs> Uh, thanks for joining us. Let me let us know what y'all think in the comments. We would really appreciate that. Was I off on something? Was Black off on something? Or were we both right? Uh, put it in the comments. Hit the like, share, and subscribe. And we will catch you in the next one. Peace.